Hi, this video will show how you can use the Rive 2 Bootstrap project structure to uh, bootstrap your application and to get started really quickly with a project that is up and running in no time so that you can start coding on your Rive 2 application. So if you go to github.com slash gbevin slash Rive 2 dash hello, you, come, you, you get here and you have two main ways to use this uh, project structure. Either you use it as a template, which then will remove all of the commits that happened before that, and you create a new GitHub uh, repository that will contain the contents of this. Uh, alternatively, you can just clone this Git repo and use it locally or use it in a GitHub project. It's up to you. Um, I'm going to do the clone method because I don't want to create a new repository. And then I'm going to um, open IntelliJ ID and do the clone from there and check it out immediately. So as you check it out, um, IntelliJ is smart. It will automatically open up the README, uh, give you some information on how to use it. And it's a Gradle project, so it will um, like resolve all the dependencies and uh, do like uh, an analysis of the project structure and show you what's in here. So immediately now, we can start running a test. So let's click here um, from the README and you can see that we have two tests that have passed. If you look at the application itself, the tests are here. Basically verifies that there's two routes that are set up in our web application. One that does a redirect, so status code 302, and another one that uh, prints out an HTML uh, page with a Rive2 template. And I'm just asserting what the title is for that template, but I'll get into that into uh, more details later. Um, now, as you're here, I wanted to show you that there's also an IntelliJ Rive 2 plugin that you can use. Um, so if you go to plugins here into the market space, and then you basically ser search for Rive 2, you can install it. And once it's installed, you will have a bunch of features that open up. Like uh, when you are in your Java source code, you can create Rive 2 files. And when you look at the templates here, it will indicate that it's a Rive uh, HTML template. And it will highlight the template tags and give you a bunch of um, additional features like live templates inside the source code so that you can very quickly create some tags. Um, but let's go back to that test here. Um, this test asserts the features that are set up in your app. So a Rive application starts by extending a site. And a site is where you will set up all the routes for your application. Um, there's two ways of doing it. Uh, this, the way I recommend to get started with is to use a setup method and inside the setup method um, basically write Java statements that declare the routes. Um, you declare a route by indicating what the method is, the HTTP method that the route should respond to, then the path, and then what should happen when that route needs to be executed. Um, and then this is a fully functional application in just um, a couple of lines of code. So the routes are set up here and below, it starts an embedded web server that is already set up to serve some static resources. So if you look here, it will serve the style sheet that is located in that web app folder. And it will start this site that you've set up here above. Um, you've got various ways of running this. You could, for instance, go to Gradle here, um, go to the tasks, and then here you could Right click run. So now your, your application is up and running and you can go to localhost 8080 and you see that it has redirected the slash to hello and printed this template. Then look at the source code here of this template. Um, if you compare that with the template here, you can see it's the same thing except that this value tag has been uh, replaced with its default content. And then there's two Rive uh, value tags that automatically get replaced when they're found. Um, so the root URL at which 
your web application has been deployed, and then a random parameter that is generated each time your web application is deployed. So that, for instance, uh, static resources like CSS files are never cached uh, across different deployments of your application. We can be sure that there's no stale CSS files that are lingering anywhere. As you can see here, this, this parameter has been added. And for as long as this has not been redeployed, this number will be the same. Now, if I just restart this deployment here, let's say that I have made an update to the application and uh, I started up again and then I reloaded, you can see that the number here changed. Uh, so that random number is generated for each deployment. Um, now let's now make a change here. So imagine that you actually want to start working with that template. Um, so we can we we can expand that lambda, make it like a, a multi-line lambda, and just like instantiate the template into in, into a variable, and then um, set value for the title, and just let's say my title. Um, now, if I save and compile this, um, hot swap will automatically replace that class, and as I reload, you can see that it says my title. It has updated in the source code. And you will then also see that if you run the tests that we ran before, so let's go back to Gradle here, um, verification test. If we run this one again, the test will fail because this doesn't say hello anymore, but it now says my title. So let's update this. Going to just rerun that test. And now it's passing, it says my title. Let's give a little um, insight into what the template engine can do uh, because a lot of people have initially uh, question, got, have questions about the template engine. So imagine that we here, we want to set up um, a list of items and I'm just creating item and um, I want to have a rife template value being replaced here. So I want it to be a short template value. And this is, let's say, counter. So what happens here is um, it will, you have an, an HTML list, an unordered list with one item. I save this and then I reload it. Oops, I forgot that I hadn't started it yet. So let's run it. So if you reload it, it says item, right? And if I look at the source code, you see that there's this comment that is displayed because the value tag doesn't have a default content. It will print it out um, so that you see that something is missing here. And since it's an HTML comment, it basically stays invisible. So let's go to the code here again, and let's do set value um, counter one. Right, um, so building it, having hot swap, swap it out. So it says one. But that's probably not what we want to do. What we want to do is do a counter from zero to nine, and then this, right? And then I want to have multiple items that are being displayed. Now, if I do it this way, so I replace one with I here, I will keep filling. So let's open the template in the right uh, split here. I will keep filling this in, which is not what we want. What we want is we want to duplicate this section and basically have multiple ones, multiple list items append here, right? So Let's highlight this, and then thanks to derive plugin, you can like, do surround with and surround with a block tag. If you tap, if you press B, it will select this one, but I'm just clicking on it now. And let's name this block tag item. And then I will create another value tag, and I will name that one items. So a block tag is a reusable puzzle piece. It's like a piece of content that the Java code can manipulate, manipulate and assemble, for instance, inside a value placeholder here and build out your layout. So what I want to do is, after I've set the value for the counter, 
I actually want to append the block and I want to append it into the items value and the block is named item. Um, so now I can reload that. Hotswap was not able to change it out. So let's start the application again. And now you see that this has generated 10 items. And if you look at the source code, it's what you've expected. Like this section has been appended 10 times to this part. Now, the cool thing is that you don't need a separate templating language to express any type of logic. I can use Java and use any logic that would be like, that would be appropriate. Imagine that um, we only want to, we never want to display um, the third one. So if modulo is zero, we just want to continue. Um, let's build that. And now those are filtered out. Or imagine that you don't like for loops um, and you basically want to create an in stream of range zero to 10 um, and then boxed and then for each. And then in here, um, it was just I. And now we want to have that piece of code here and remove the for loop. So if you like working with streams uh, or any other Java construct for that matter, um, like building that project again, looks like we have to restart it. You can reload it and it, it uses this. Um, let's just show that it's actually using that piece of code because it kind of looks the same as the for loop. So now we've got 20 items, right? Um, so that's kind of the power in of the Rive template engine that the only thing it does, it provides value placeholders and blocks that are reu reusable pieces of content that can be manipulated any which way you want through Java. Um, so that's one of the things you can quickly get started with here with um, the Hello Bootstrap project structure. Um, it's got some other things. If you look at the CSS file, it's structured in a recommended way uh, with CSS variables. It's a nice way to get started. And you'll notice um, that we already have a structure to set up a war file if you want to deploy it to uh, a standalone server container. Um, but it also has an, a facility to deploy an Uber jar. Um, so by default, like what we've set up here is uh, an app that extends the site and uses the, the built-in uh, servlet container. If we generate an Uber jar, the resources will be packaged in there. So that is why this has been extended, the app class, and it added a different type of resource base. Uh, what you can do here is also, for instance, change the port number and say we we make the sport 40, 42, 42 um, in case we want to deploy our Uber jar that way. So how can you use this? If we go back to the readme, um, you can see that all the instructions are here. Um, so we already did this. We did a test. We ran the server. Um, we can create a war file. So let's, let's do that one. Let's copy this and basically generate a war file. You can see one interesting part here is that Rife is able to uh, pre-compile the templates and basically turn them into Java classes, which makes them incredibly fast. Um, so you'll see that the war file has been generated. And now if you, if you look in this directory, it basically has everything for you to get started. Um, now, if you go a little bit further, you can see there is like an other way of deploying a Rife application, which is creating an Uber jar. So let's, let's do that one. Um, now the Uber jar is created. Let's take a look at, at where it is. So it should be here. So here's the Uber jar that contains basically all the classes necessary to run the embedded web server, which is the latest Jetty version um, with this setup. So let's go back to the readme. 
This is how we can execute it. So let's copy that. And you can see that it has started up. Um, and let's let's try it out. So it started at port 4242, which is the one we set up in that class here. Um, so we can go to our website here, do 4242, and there we go. It's it's running, it's up and running. Um, well, let's do control C to shut it down and try it again so that you can see that it was actually doing that. Um, so that's a really quick overview over um, the features of the Bootstrap application. I'll make a number of other videos that go deeper into some of the Rive features and uh, how the plugin works. Thanks for watching. Bye.